Italian Wine Podcast. Chin Chin with Italian Wine People. Hello, this is the Italian Wine Podcast. My name is Monty Walden. My guest today is Vitaliano Tirito, or Tirito of the Bella Vista Winery, which is synonymous with sparkling wine. And he's export director. Benvenuto Vitaliano. Grazie. Grazie, Monti. How are you? Oh, good. Thank you. I mean, it's, uh, I feel a little bit static these days, but it's okay. Your, your career, career-wise, you haven't been very static. You've worked for all the great names in Italy. You work for the Mazzei family in Fonterutoli, which is like, uh, like the birthplace of uh, Chianti Classico. Bertani Domains is export manager. Correct. Uh, and now uh, Bella Vista. So you just had a bottle of wine in your hand. What have you got? What's inside the bottle? Uh, well, uh, the, de- the wine we're, we're show, show, showcasing today, it's a, a rosé, 2015 rosé, Bella Vista. So it's, it's a wine made uh, mostly uh, with, uh, with Chardonnay, a little bit more than Pinot Noir. Let's say 60, 60 Chardonnay, 40% Pinot Noir. Okay, and is it a, so is it a rosato, a rosé, or is it a white wine, a white sparkler? Ah, it's a rosé, rosé sparkling. Yeah, okay. Sparkling. What do you, yeah. When you're out selling this and people ask you, like you're going to a restaurant or um, even nightclubs, I guess, and someone asks about a, a good food and wine match, what would you suggest? Oh, well, with a, a rosé is quite a flexible uh, wine, if we have to say. So, uh, for sure, the, the first thing you think about, it, it's fish, uh, different kind of fish, grilled fish. Oh, but you can use as well some uh, very good juicy fish. So, uh, Orata la Provenzale, for example, is a, is, a very good, uh, is a very good dish to match with. Or oh, salmon, for sure, definitely, is a must. So, yeah. how is... In terms of the market for sparkling wine in Italy, um, how, is that, um, how is that developing and how is it the difference between the Italian market, domestic market and foreign markets, export market? Well, you know, we're, we're, talking, we're talking about Franciacorta. That uh, is definitely a niche market compared uh, to all the rest of the Franciacorta, uh, oh, sorry, of the sparkling big names. So uh, it's very much focus on domestic sales. So the 85% of the production of Franciacorta stays uh, in the domestic market within the, within, within the Italian borders. Uh, the rest, the 15%, it's spread uh, all around the world. We export in 75 countries. Uh, at the same time, uh, some of those 75 are very, very small markets. So uh, Japan, if you take out Japan, uh, Switzerland, Germany, Belgium, UK, Russia, and the United States, the rest is, is really breadcrumbs. Okay, it's really but still, Yeah, but still is important to, to be present for sure. Okay, and in terms of demographics, who is, who is drinking uh, Francia Corte sparkling wine abroad? Is it... Is it, is it um, nightclubbers? Is it uh, business people, families? Uh, for sure, we have to, we have to think that um, most of the time a bottle of Franciacorta Bella Vista can, can cost, uh, if not the same, for sure, a little bit above a champagne. I'm not talking uh, big names, but if you take, for example, Roderer or Boulanger, uh, we are usually 20, 30 percent, a little bit below those names. But uh, of many maisons from of, of Champagne, we can position ourselves a little bit, a little bit above. So this means uh, it's not very young oriented uh, as a as a drink. Uh, you have to, you need to have a um, a good uh, purchasing power to drink uh, Franciacorta. Uh, so I would say, if we talk about demographic, is uh, thirty five, forty years old above. Okay, but how do you add value to the product? Obviously, you're you're, you're targeting, you know, um, people who've, who've got a solid career. They, as you said, they can afford. Well, oh, the, the you know the, the people the the people that can that can handle uh, to drink Franciacorta are at the same time uh, the client of specific places in town. Uh, so the very important thing for us to do is a proper segmentation in terms of restaurant. 
So once we can, you know, highlight where are the, the fancy places, the high-end restaurant, then we, we need to have the right guys to go there and that's it. So uh, it's, more, it's more about having, having the right importer and being together in the, in the right portfolios when it comes to, you know, offering uh, different kind of wines. So it's very important that Bella Vista in the portfolio is together with uh, Montevertine or together with Fonterutoli or together with uh, Donna Fugata, you know, just to create the right synergy among the, the importer portfolio the, or the distributor portfolio. Yeah, so it's very strategic, isn't it, how you, how you operate? You know? Yeah, I mean, we, it's, really to, it's, it's really a matter of positioning. So... Um, we don't have a lot of bottles. Uh, all the bottles, especially especially um, the vintage wine like this rosé, uh, we work on a location. So each market has got its uh, precise quantity, and that's it for for the whole year. I mean, maybe for 2020, <laughs> we, we're going to have a little bit more flexibility. <laughs> but but uh, usually we work on a location, so we really need to be sure that every bottle is going to do its homework. You know, at the end of the day, it's interesting you talk about that. We when we talk about um, sort of iconic uh, brands, if you like, obviously people, a lot of people just think immediately of, for example, Brunello di Montalcino, and um, which is a leader, obviously, for, for Italy. But Francia sure. Porta is is right up there with uh, um, with uh, Brunello, and also, you know, do you do comparative tastings with? Um, is one of your things to do comparative tastings with Francia Corta against the champagne or would you just want to focus on Francia Corta? Um, well, uh, it, it depends. It depends on the, on the audience, uh, to be honest. Sometimes it's interesting to do uh, uh, comparison with champagne uh, because for sure, if we think about champagne, there is this, this high acidity, this fantastic minerality, uh, but then as well, uh, we enjoy a very nice maturation. Uh, so the, the phenolic maturation is there. For us, it's all about primary perfumes and a little bit on the secondary side. Champagne, it's a lot of tertiary as well. So the, it's really different. So it's important, it's important to, to, to show the difference in between Francia Corta and Champagne. That's one direction. Uh, the other thing that we do uh, to play a little bit more on the Italian ground and to show the, the possibility of the Italian sparkling wine, uh, we compare our Francia Corta, you know, with Alta Langa, Trento Doc, Oltre Popavese. So we do this quite often, and we think it's, it's very interesting, especially for the people abroad, uh, to 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 get you know all the different nuances of the of the Italian metodo classico in a way. So, so yeah, they, so they almost become your ambassadors, I guess, don't they? When they when they see sure. these differences, yeah, and, yeah, uh, you you, uh, you create a following. Yeah, I mean, uh, what what we are experiencing around the world, it's uh, uh, it's very difficult to get a um, share of mind. You know, it's like it's very difficult to really uh, stuck into. Uh, the possibility of each client uh, to even consider to buy a bottle of Francia Corta instead of champagne. But once, once we do that, once we manage to do that, and once the people try Francia Corta, uh, until now, I didn't meet anyone that said, oh, I don't like it. You know, the, the drink is not pleasant. I'm not enjoying drinking a Francia Corta. It's not possible because it's really a pleasant drink. It's straightforward. It's really an Italian style drinking. So it's, uh, it's uh, the, 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 until you reach the client, it's a very difficult road. Once the client tastes the wine, uh, we are okay. I mean, we are fine because we know there's going to be uh, a second purchase after. Yeah. Final question with, um, with climate change, temperatures getting a little bit warmer. How, how will that affect um, the Francia Corta wine style? Will it make it even more juicy? You're talking about this fruitiness and juiciness? Well, that could be for sure the effect. Yeah, that's true. Um, we have to think about how to train, how to train the vineyards properly. properly. So uh, it's very important to work a lot in the vineyards. Uh, maybe we will have to 
to anticipate a little bit the harvest uh, as is happening at the end of the day in the last five, six years. Uh, yeah, but it, it might be that, that we need to, uh, I mean, that we are going on the, on the more juicy side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're saying picking, becoming a, more ripeness, let's say. So with, with, so you're saying with um, picking a little bit earlier, maybe for, to maintain that wonderful acidity. Yes. Um, and a little bit more leaf cover so that the grapes don't ripen or over, over. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I just want to say thanks very much, Vitaliano. Um, thanks very much for telling us a little bit about um, Francia Corta. No problem. Uh, My pleasure. All your all your travels and uh, wish you a long and happy career at Bella Vista and um, every success to you and to your company and, uh, and fingers crossed for the future. Thank you very much. All, all right, the nice best to you as well. Thank you very much. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. ciao. Buona giornata. Ciao, buona serata. Eh, speriamo che possiamo incontrarci. Certo, you volentieri. Know. Molto Tell volentieri. I think we've ever met. You have got a great, I love your CV though. It's like uh, Ronaldo. <laughs> All these well, he's like, he's been to, he's played for, he started off at Real Madrid, then he tried <laughs> at Liverpool, then he played for uh, Borussia Dortmund or something, and now he's at Juve or, uh, or Inter. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, Ronaldo is not really uh, my, my age. Uh, another guy, but but I have I have a soccer player that I like a lot. That it's exactly my age. That it's Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Oh yeah, you're a tough guy, yeah. <laughs> so, so so we I've I've been doing what is what he did as well. So jumping from uh, you know among good companies. Yeah, yeah. He's had a successful career, career and uh, he's coming to the end of his. But you seem like you're still very much in the middle of yours. And uh, yeah, very sure, produ- sure. Very productive time for you, you know. We wish you every success. Thanks a lot. Thanks indeed. Thanks for coming in. Ciao. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Listen to the Italian Wine Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We're on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Himalaya FM and more. Don't forget to subscribe and rate the show. If you enjoy listening, please consider donating through italianwinepodcast.com. Any amount helps cover equipment, production and publication costs. Until next time, chin chin.